Well, golf specimen has kind of been an evolutionary process. You know, bear in mind, I started it basically with a bucket, a dip net, a dog, and an old car, and I was collecting specimens there and, and bringing them to the biology department and then started shipping. I guess my first big order was actually shipping live horseshoe crabs to the World's Fair in Seattle in 1962. And it kind of branched out from there. The scientific community needed specimens. They wanted to study, say, bioluminescence in, in a jellyfish and, uh, or, or how an electric ray discharged and made a shock. So they initiated it and said, can you get us the electric ray? Can we get live sea panties? Can we get live jellyfish? And uh, we responded accordingly. Is this, was this just back. caught today? Yes, or? caught today or yesterday. Oh. Where did, oh, well, okay. I am standing here holding a turtle. I don't know why. <laughs> I uh, first met Jack over the phone. I was a university student in Virginia, and I was doing an honors project in marine biology, and I needed some live marine animals. So I got the, my professor gave me this little catalog, and it said Gulf Specimen Company, and it had live scallops and crabs in them, so we'd get these boxes every now and then up in Virginia that had live marine animals. And when I came to graduate school in, at Florida State in Tallahassee, I made it a point to go down there and uh, meet Jack and see what the place was like, and I ended up staying, and that was 40 years ago. And now let's meet our next team of challengers. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is Jack Rudlow. In the mid-60s, I ended up on this television program on CBS called To Tell the Truth, and where they had a central character with a real person, please stand up. So suddenly, there I am on, on screen before an audience of uh, people trying to guess who was Jack Rudlow and uh, who was the person that went to Madagascar and collected specimens and so on. And uh, I think two of those people, you know, guessed who I was and uh, two didn't, but uh, it's a great experience. Jack Rudlow, please stand up. Being around life and seeing all these different creatures on shrimp boats or going to the beach and watching sea turtles and watching various fish and invertebrates and creatures and starfish and anemones just basically made me want to write about them and to share. And so I've been writing books and we've still been writing books and we're going to continue to write books. For the late 60s, um, you know, I had a book published, The Sea Brings Forth, and it was out and made New York Times. And I got an invite from the uh, editors of National Geographic to come down and talk to them. So we got to do our first article on the Suwannee River and uh, later on to the Atchafalaya Basin in Louisiana. And then we did one on horseshoe crabs and finally one on sea turtles. And by the same time, you know, being, being published and, uh, and getting around in that, that, that world, I got to, uh, to meet people in Smithsonian and we got articles in that and, uh, and National Natural History Magazine and Audubon and so on. Well, golf specimen took on a life of its own after it became sort of more open to the public and people learned about it. It's, uh, we have thousands of school kids. Actually, we have a visitation of about 18,000 people that come through. Many of them, of course, kids on school buses that come through and they get to look at the animals, touch them, pick them, pick them up, handle them, learn all about them. We have, um, we have graphics and signs and we just basically showcase everything that we had that's in the in these wonderful Florida waters and, and the, of the Panhandle and the waters of Wakala County. We get to show them up close and let them connect and touch, pick up spider crabs and horseshoe crabs and watch jellyfish pulsing around and all the things that are out there, but we make it very accessible and they really love it. When we bring people out on this dock, really amazing things happen because for most of them, they've never been in an environment like this. They have no idea that anything lives out here in this water. They just see murky water. But when we get the little trays out and we show them the little tiny things that are out here and that that's all alive, you just see their faces are transformed, especially the kids get so excited because they had no idea that this was here. And you can't really get people to care about things so like life on Earth and the big scale until 
know they've had some direct experience with it. If it's just pictures on TV or words in a book or just one more cause that you're supposed to worry about, that doesn't work. What works is when people see it and get excited and have held it or touched it themselves. Then they get to care about it. Now, how many of y'all have been to the beach? Our youngest child, Cypress, has always had a great affinity for the sea, and he's really blended in and taken, taken the reins at Gulf Specimen, and he's really done an incredible job uh, just um, taking people out on field trips, explaining marine life. He has a real good feel for people. Cypress put together a fundraiser called Sharks and Chablis. It was a wine tasting, but it was a chance to bring people in from all over the place to see golf specimen and to uh, help them, uh, to get them to kind of help us, you know, raise money for the new roof and for some of the things that we did. And he did an incredible job. He's a really a social, outgoing person, and, uh, and everybody responded in a big way. I would love to see a uh, full-service aquarium here for this general area with sharks, dolphins, turtles, and I would like to see a strong education program built simultaneously with it. They can really teach the general public not just about the fish or the grouper or the dolphin, but how they're all interconnected. And that's not just for the kids to learn that, that's for the adults too. The strong part of Gulf Specimen is it showcases life, and you can't get better than that. Our, our future lies in, in showing all the great diversity of the oceans, of our staff, people uh, that, that have a great feeling and energy and a desire to share with Cyprus and, and uh, our other people uh, and ourselves going out to groups and saying, this is here, this is the energy, this is the future of the planet, this is all we really have is the life that's on this planet and we've got to do what we can to preserve it. And the future of Gulf Specimen is going to do that.